In the late 1930s, as Nazi Germany rose to power, the world witnessed a kind of brutality and control it hadn't seen before. Adolf Hitler's regime wasn't just about war, it was about domination of the human mind and spirit. The Nazis perfected the art of propaganda, turning millions of ordinary citizens into loyal, unquestioning followers. And within the concentration camps, doctors carried out horrific experiments on prisoners, seeking to manipulate human behavior through torture, drugs, and psychological terror. When the Allies liberated Europe, they uncovered the full horror of these camps. But they didn't just find victims, they found research. Nazi doctors had been testing the limits of the human body and mind. These grotesque experiments revealed something terrifying, that human behavior could, in fact, be manipulated. World War II was over, but the scars remained. And as the world tried to rebuild, a new fear emerged. This is the Kremlin, citadel of Russian communism. Looking at Russia, we might see it as a country to be studied, as we study other nations of the world. Yet we know that Russia today is regarded as a grave threat to our nation, to our freedom, to the peace of the world. If the Nazis could come so close to perfecting mind control, what if someone else, someone like the Soviets, picked up where they left off? As tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union grew, the CIA became obsessed with one idea, controlling the mind. If you could control a person's thoughts, their actions, you could control the world. That's when the CIA, under a man named Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, launched MKUltra, a program that would go down in history as one of the most disturbing chapters in American history. Under Operation Paperclip, the US brought over hundreds of Nazi scientists, men who had conducted horrific experiments in concentration camps, men who had pushed the boundaries of science far beyond morality. The US saw an opportunity to use their knowledge against a new enemy, the Soviet Union. Enter Dr. Sidney Gottlieb a brilliant but unassuming chemist with a love for folk dancing and a farm life that stood in stark contrast to the dark mission he would soon lead. In 1953, Gottlieb was given the reins of MKUltra, a top secret CIA program aimed at exploring the limits of human consciousness. The objective, to find a way to control, manipulate, and if necessary, erase the mind. LSD became Gottlieb's weapon of choice. He believed this new, powerful drug could unlock the secrets of the human mind. But he wasn't interested in recreational use. He wanted to use it as a tool of control. What if you could force someone to confess? Make them forget everything they knew? Even turn them into a mindless assassin? These were the questions driving MK Ultra forward. MKUltra wasn't confined to dark, hidden laboratories. The CIA brought its experiments into the real world. In Operation Midnight Climax, brothels were set up in San Francisco and New York. Men were lured in off the streets, given LSD without their knowledge, while CIA agents watched behind two-way mirrors. These men became unwitting subjects. Their reactions observed like lab rats. And what was the goal? to see if their minds could be controlled, if they could be turned into puppets with just a few doses of the drug. But the experiments didn't stop with drugs. Across North America, doctors working with the CIA conducted psychological experiments that went far beyond the ethical line. Patients in mental hospitals were subjected to weeks of sensory deprivation, isolated in dark, silent rooms with no contact. Others were given massive doses of LSD, while enduring electric shocks, hypnosis, and mind-numbing repetition. Dr. Donald Ewan Cameron, a prominent psychiatrist, played a major role in MKUltra's most horrific experiments. He believed that through psychic driving, he could wipe a patient's mind clean and rebuild it from scratch. How did he do it? By sedating his patients for days, weeks, sometimes months, and playing the same recorded messages on a loop over and over until their minds were shattered. In one case, a woman who came to him for mild depression was so heavily dosed with electroshock and drugs that she forgot how to speak, how to walk, how to live.
but the darkest chapter of MKUltra may be the story of Frank Olson, a biochemist working on biological weapons for the U.S. government. The CIA people after dinner put LSD into Cointreau, an after dinner liqueur that was given to all the um, people present. Um, one of the, the army guys, uh, Dr. Frank Olson, had a very, very bad trip. What we call now a bad trip, that word, that language didn't exist. He lost it. He thought he was, um, he had gone over the edge. He couldn't get back. And for whatever reason, he was not able to become who he had been before. Olson is never told the reason is LSD. And because the unwitting victim is part of a top secret experiment, Gottlieb and Lashbrook take charge of him themselves. Instead of taking the guy to a hospital or taking him to see a, a psychiatrist uh, who could help him understand what had happened to him, Gottlieb and Lashbrook took him to New York and consulted with an allergist who happened to be receiving CIA funding to play with LSD himself. This is not responsible behavior, and the outcome was predictable. On September 24, 1953, just five days after drinking the LSD-laced Cointreau, Robert Lashbrook reports waking up at 5.30 a.m. just in time to see Frank Olson crash through the 10th floor window of their New York hotel room at a dead run. It will be more than 20 years before Olson's widow learns that her husband was, in fact, killed by government LSD experiments. If there had been a responsible set of controls in the agency, they would have said, hey, wait a second. Gottlieb and Lashbrook are not the guys who should be involved in doing this kind of stuff. They killed somebody. That wasn't what happened. Instead, they were given a slap on the wrist, informal reprimand, didn't even go in the personnel files. And their funding was increased, delivering one clear message. You're doing a good job, fellas. And the notion is, in order to protect the country, in order to protect the national security of the United States, anything is justified. After Frank Olson died, it made absolutely no difference. They didn't miss a beat. An autopsy performed in the 1990s revealed blunt force trauma to Olson's skull, consistent with a blow to the head before his fall. But the truth of what happened that night may never be fully known. What we do know is that Olson was one of many victims sacrificed in the name of national security. For over two decades, MKUltra operated in the shadows, hidden behind layers of government secrecy. But in 1975, the Church Committee, a Senate investigation into U.S. intelligence abuses, brought MKUltra into the light. What they uncovered was shocking. More than 150 subprojects, thousands of victims, and no accountability. Sidney Gottlieb had destroyed most of the records before the investigations began, but enough remained to paint a picture of the CIA's obsession with mind control. The survivors who came forward described lives shattered by the program, people who had been dosed, tortured, and subjected to experiments without their knowledge. Many could no longer remember their own names or past lives. The U.S. government had waged war not on foreign enemies, but on its own citizens. MKUltra wasn't just an experiment. It was a violation of human rights on a massive scale, orchestrated in secret by a government terrified of losing control. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb may have retired quietly, far from the horrors he had unleashed, but the legacy of MKUltra is still felt today. MKUltra proves that even in a democracy, when fear drives the agenda, Power can be abused in ways we can barely comprehend. The greatest danger, in the end, may not come from an enemy outside, but from within.